This week, we review the Japanese classic Battle Royale, who is directed by... Uh, it's actually directed by Kinji Fukusaku. Uh, came out in 2000. Um, won all kinds of awards, including Best, uh, Best Picture in the Japanese Academy Awards. Um, James, what's the plot, man? So, well, you know, this is actually a little bit of a futuristic movie. Mm-hmm. Um, so, if you're looking for something that's a little bit realistic, you're not going to find it here. Yeah. I mean, this is what it's basically about. It's about the Japanese government gets tired of the way that teenage kids are acting. Right, because they've, so, they've been rebelling, yeah, and, they've been and, rebelling and, and not going to school. And It's the future. There's a lot of unemployment. You know, there's yeah. almost sounds a like, bunch of stuff going on. From the, the synopsis, it, it sounds it's like it's almost like Akira, but with no animation. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so, <laughs> so, what the adults do is they put together what is referred to as a battle royale act. Okay. And they take selected classes, mm-hmm. and they all basic, ninth grade, right? Uh, no, any grade. Remember the girl in the beginning? She was oh, not right. ninth grade. Okay, yeah, she was. She was younger. She was in a fourth grade class. So they take any class randomly if they act up or anything, and then they pitch them on an island and put them in a battle royale to the death, and the winner gets to leave. That's that's basically the whole synopsis of this movie. Now, it's like, like no escape, s- but with school children. Yeah. Now, what yeah. Ryan was saying is this movie actually has gotten a lot of awards. Um, yeah, many, many awards. Surprising thing is that IMDb, you know, I mean, we bash IMDb a lot. Sure. In, in this show. But this one they actually have right. So there are movies that they do get right. Oh, yeah. This every, one every, has a 7.8 rating on IMDb. Yeah. And really? That's, that's because it's generally uh, wow. uh, accepted by, by not only critics, but the public, yeah, you know, too. Exactly. Even, even though, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, especially American audiences, you know, sort of shy away from all of the, you know, the subtitled Japanese movies well, and things like it. that. I mean, people exactly. are afraid to read movies. So I don't understand yeah, yeah. why. Well, one of the things I kept hearing was, uh, vice versa, people saying that Hunger Games is a ripoff of this, and this is a ripoff of Hunger Games. And well, uh, I've, this, I've this, this was this was made first. Um, I'm not going to get into the whole controversy on whether the chick actually ripped it off or not. She she claims that she never heard anything about it before that she before and, she wrote and her I script. Because this movie is a little bit of an underground movie. It, I mean, it was underground, but it, I mean, it became such a cult hit. In America, kind of like even Boondock yeah, kind of like Boondock Saints, but even from Japan came over here and 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 became kind of a cult classic, you know, amongst you know maybe smaller crowds and things like that. Well, but you know, Quentin Tarantino has obviously seen this movie. Sure, absolutely. I've I mean, heard that this because is based, he took the chick from her. I mean, I'm I've not. Heard gonna, this is loosely based off of like a Greek mythology. Oh, is that I, right? I read that somewhere that it's based off of some mythology that somehow. Because that's I've heard how uh, Battle Royale and Hunger Games both have the same kind of ethos. Around right. Them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's a lot of similarities. So I mean, if it's based off of something like that, then I can cut the well, the, I mean, the woman who made Hunger Games a lot of slack. To, to just take this and say they're all just a rip off Lord of the Flies. Sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you really want Lord of the it, Flies meets Running Man. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You could totally meets go that no far. escape. <laughs> right. Yeah. Meets no escape. <laughs> but the thing I want to point out about this movie is why I like this movie so much is because of the fact that it's got everything. It's got futuristic. Yeah. It's got love story. Sure. It's got comedy. It's oh, got yeah. action. It's got drama. It's got everything yeah, you- wrapped into the story. I understand that a lot of you people may be watching this movie and be like, dear God, there's a lot of blood and gore. Honestly, not as much as you would expect. Sure, no. it's, and, it's and a it, little slow though at parts. It's not exactly but that's the world. Because world's... what I'm saying is that they're building up plot, yeah. they're yeah. building up drama, they're trying to get you to like the char- the characters. See, I, I can kind I of can... agree. It's kind of an odd pacing. Yeah, sort of. I didn't love none of the characters. I loved. There was nobody like I wanted to grab hold of and go. I want this person to survive. But I almost think that kind of helped. The, the plot in general because you didn't find yourself sort of sort of predicting oh it's going to be this person it's going to be this person because you know that this is the protagonist this is the antagonist it's kind of kind of pick your 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 guy sort of reservoir dogs here you Mr. Pink you Mr. White kind of thing true this yeah. one it's sort of I, I like you know they don't want to draw you to somebody right exactly they they don't want to I, I don't think they wanted to to, to really Lay any kind of advantage on any one of the uh, any one well, of the kids. It started out with forty of them, and they really kind of 42, followed forty two. Forty two, um, <laughs> not when they left the building. It was forty, um, yeah. <laughs> but they 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 seem to to want to 
kind of keep everybody on sort of an even playing field. It, Which it's, is kind of what I like, and that's one of the tags in this movie. The, the big tag in it is kill, kill, could you kill your best friend? Right. And, you and know what? that's really what the point of what they're trying to draw into this movie. And if you actually pay attention to a lot of the way that they develop and, and yeah. introduce you to so many different people, is because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to give you a little bit of a backstory without making the movie like five hours yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To kind of show like, yeah, these people all knew each other. Right. And they went to the same school. They Not only went to the together. same school, they're in the same class. These yeah. are these are people that are spending, you know, upwards of, you know, five, six, seven hours a day together, clicking up in their own little things. And, you exactly. know, one of, one of my favorite things about this about this movie was... Basically, they they showed the adolescence of of yeah. the people that was going on because obviously, look, the movie's about people who are trying to kill each other. You know this this okay every you know last person to, to survive you know uh, wins the game. Um, but they they really came across with the adolescence of like, look, these are you know fourteen year old kids. These are yeah. ninth graders. Like what I'm I mean, trying you're, to get you're, you're a freshman in high school. Imagine being a freshman in high school and being put in that situation. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought they they kind of. They they sort of took a bunch of different avenues with it, you know, like like people trying to 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 be cool, and then you had like sort of the 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 really the clicky click, chicks, yeah. you know, that that went off in their own little direction, tried to manipulate people. Um, I mean, there was a bunch of different angles that it that it took. I was actually surprised by the number of the suicides in this movie. Yeah, which yeah, yeah. which is something that would never happen in an American movie. Oh, no way, no well, way. I do have to say though, in the beginning. I love the... We watched the... What was it? What version of this movie was it? We actually watched the director's cut, so there was yeah, a lot extended of version, extended yeah. scenes. And honestly... I love the opening, the the warning of it, and the, the, the Japanese yeah. warning. Well, well the thing I'm going to actually point out about uh, audience viewers who are watching this and trying to decide if they're going to watch this movie yeah. is don't even bother getting the director's. No, the original was was good. I mean, it just they just actually basically the director's bit. cut is is kind of just random little interstitials that they sort of throw in yeah. as backstory yeah. or as as maybe just uh, a, a, a train of thought that somebody's going through or a yeah, daydream they, they or a dream add itself. Or take away anything. Which, no, yeah, which is weird for a director's cut because most director's cut add action right. or some sort of storyline yeah. that's coherent. Yeah, this one it really does seem to add nothing but backstory. Right, art yeah. film kind of kind of yeah. content. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, now. One of the great things about this movie is that they actually got one of my favorite actors, Japanese actors. Oh, yeah. Um, Takashi Kitano. Now... Is that Zatoichi? Yeah, that's Zatoichi. <laughs> yeah. Great, the blind great swordsman. Great actor. The blind swordsman. Uh, it, it, if you guys actually watch this, he's actually the main protagonist. Sure. Yeah, in yeah, this yeah. movie. And uh, check out some of those as well is what I would suggest. I like him in this movie. He did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because he brought he, a lot of legitimacy to, yeah, the, to the whole thing. My, my only thing about calling him the protagonist, it seemed like he didn't want to be there either. He was forced to, because I didn't get any love this guy, hate well, this guy. Well, well I, I don't I think it, say, I think it might have. What were you going to uh, say? The point I'm going to bring up here is uh, also, audience members out there, there's a battle royale too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't bother. <laughs> honestly, 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 don't bother. Uh, like, this movie is like a 7.8. IMDb rates the Battle Royale 2 at like a 4. Well, look. Bo wow. Bottom so, line. Bottom some... line, don't do it. But the reason why I'm bringing that up for this is because it, in Battle Royale 2, it shows his relationship at home. Okay. okay. And he's got this daughter who absolutely despises him. Okay, yeah. She's like brutal, brutal. Remember, I pointed right, out when we were the, watching uh, this, and she, I said, she was "You on see the phone. that? They got he got, he the, got phone the phone call. call. That's kind of what his mindset is, and they show that a lot more in Battle Royale right, too. Yeah. They don't bring that up in this one. I, I just, I just think that this one is is definitely something that can stand alone. I mean, yes. it, it's not, yeah. it's not and something that they were avoid. ever required a sequel. I'm sure you know. I mean, Japanese Academy. I'm sure is a lot like the American Academy. Hey, this movie made a lot of money for for you know this art in this country. Let's do another one. I hope know? they're not as pretentious as the American I, I don't Academy think are. so. They they have a lot less rules than we do. 
You can tell that just by any but, turn on the you know like any kind of Japanese television, and you'll. But I haven't been blown away by very many. No, 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 neither have I. Except for this one, really, honestly, is as far as the live actions go. Yeah, yeah. It, now, did you guys have any like one of my favorites? One of the things I noticed, I really thought was funny, were two things that really stood out was. The plastic floor in the main building, yeah. uh, like the floor yeah. is plastic lined. Yeah, well, like an American it, Psycho kind of. Kind yeah, of yeah, I just have the whole movie. room lined with plastic because uh, people are like, going to die in this room. Why am I walking on plastic? Right. Yeah. And all of a sudden, somebody pulls out a gun and you're dead. Right. And yeah. I, I love, I love how how <laughs> how um oh what was his what was his character's name um uh the the uh, <laughs> he uh, actually went by Katano Sensei. Katano. Oh that, right, Quintana. But um, actually, his uh, name supposedly in the movie is Bito Takashi, but everybody calls him calls Quintana. Him Quintana. Okay. Quintana Sensei, which is actually his real name, and that's why I always thought was that's kind of funny because they yeah. never really call him Bito Takashi. Yeah. Okay. I'm um, like, that's really funny. <laughs> anyway, just random fact. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Um, now I forgot what I was saying. Thank you for your random fact. Hope you guys enjoyed that random fact. <laughs> You're welcome, people. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> go on. Um, okay, com- uh, completely lost my train of thought. Uh, okay, one one thing I, I really liked about the, uh, this uh, was really the the little bits of comedy that were sprinkled out, like the plastic thing, um, the, the the instructional video. Oh yeah, might oh, be one yeah. of the, the one, might be one of the funniest things I've ever seen in in, in foreign film. Uh, that, that was, was just, just so tongue in cheek, and and he was so into watching that video, man. That, I know, I, know. <laughs> I, love, I love that. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the stereotypical, you know, the chick that was in there was like, ha, ah, you know, the whole yeah. thing was oh, really man. well played. It, it was, it was <laughs> so campy. Um, oh, that, that's what I was gonna say a minute ago. Is uh, is all of those little things was was basically set up for him. Like, like he almost knew he was just gonna kill a couple of people in that room right off the bat. Almost, almost to show the kids, I think, like sort of what they got into. The one of my favorite parts in the movie was the kids get into the room. They're they're drugged on the bus. They they get taken to this, you know, what looked like a like a classroom in some you know weird warehouse. Um, all of a sudden, they're surrounded by military. Their old teacher comes in from a couple of years ago. And he basically explains, now you have to kill each other, last one survives wins. And the the part that everybody's trying to process that, and just having it sink in, the way they showed that, I, I, I don't think anybody could have could have showed that any any better than the way they did. You know, um, and they used the necklace. They had this necklace on some by the on and everybody that explodes right, that right, just right. blows out the Adam's apple. And what was the other way? Was it stabbing or um, shoot somebody? They killed two people. Oh, well, yeah, he threw in the guy. No, in the, in the, the woman's head. Yeah, in the well, young girl, I guess. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess she was talking a little too much and just whipped a knife right in her forehead. Oh yeah, and yeah, and what? A couple minutes later, you know, tests out the uh, the little shock collar. Yeah, yeah, he uses yeah. this uh, like shot, he uses like a, a TV remote control and just goes right. Kick. Yeah, yeah, and then that's, he goes. That's a universal <laughs> remote that I want. Um, you know, I actually like the way that they did it in the second one over the first one because the way they introduce what's going on in the second one was a lot bloodier oh yeah yeah <laughs> um I, you know way what? crazier and way bloodier because you were blood- you were saying earlier that, that you didn't feel like there was a whole lot of, of of gore like you thought there was gonna be no this was it was you know I was expecting kind of a like a like a gore exploitation like film right. yeah, yeah. or a Quentin Tarantino do okay so let me ask you this do you think it that it took away from from the story, or that it kind of added to sort of the eeriness of like these are fourteen year old kids killing each other. I think it took away from the film because there was less blood. It wasn't even close to being realistic. Really? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. There were there was a couple of parts that had their moments, like the uh, one of the one of the first deaths when the when the the one of the girls killed uh, the with the sickle. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and the that, knife. That was surprisingly creepy. I, I remember watching that the uh, the first time and yeah. and just just being kind of like wow that is. Okay. Because, I mean, she totally <laughs> played the girl. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's what I like. Ryan's point is bringing up is that you have these different cliques that I mean, if you're not part of it, are they really going to let you in? Right. Everybody like, has what, their like weird little the, strategies. Like the Kawada guy when he first walked up and they pull out the fan and they're like, "Oh, this is your weapon." Blah 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 right. blah blah. You know, and they're like, "You don't belong with us." 
that's kind of what Ryan's point is. is there's a lot of play in there that they did with the teenage click crap. Yeah, and there's there's a lot of different styles of. of and plus the fact, I mean, really, do you actually think that if, in our high school graduating class, that if we were in that situation, that we would just all of a sudden just start killing everybody, massacre style? Oh no, yeah, you you think have friends it. in there, and you know what? The person you got to worry about is all the loners. The loners wouldn't care. Everybody else probably. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. And, and you know, even the loners, like I was gonna say, everybody has their own little little special strategies, and it and it really plays a lot to their age, to their to their gender, um, to who they know. Um, it was surprising how much of I mean, uh, even though it's Japanese and a, and a completely different culture, it reminded me of high school because everybody's in has a crush on everybody. Exactly. Nobody There's really so knows about stories. it. I mean, I yeah, every everything you. was really kind of kind of playing into like, oh, okay, so how is this going to come down when people have to to kill each other later on? And I think they were trying to put that moral dilemma in your head the whole time. Yeah. So I was going to say yeah. about oh, sorry. I was going to bring up something because you were interested in this earlier. I remember you actually asking this and I kind of mm -hmm. mentioned like I want to know how many were out there mm -hmm. the weapons provided oh, okay. include they don't give a number on each one oh, okay. but Uzi, mm -hmm. submachine guns handguns, comma which is a side like weapon the sp uh, spas 12, ga 12 gauge 12 gauge shotgun gauge, yeah. nunchucks uh -huh. taser, right. knife mm -hmm. hand axe, crossbow and I was wrong. That wasn't actually a katana. That was a waka zazishi. Yeah, it was. It was but, a shorty. Yeah, a shorty. Uh, potassium cyanide. Right. Okay. Poison. So that's what the that's what the the girl had oh, in, wow. the, in the lighthouse. The well, non weapons. Was. The yeah, non weapons. Yeah, doing pretty good, huh? <laughs> was a megaphone, electronic collar tracer, the paper fan that I just mentioned, right. saucepan lid, and binoculars. The paper fan. I, I was going to say, though, that the, the weapon I thought that was probably the most useful in the whole entire game was the GPS. But the dude, the bloke who had it completely, completely underused. Yeah. 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 Like the guy that <laughs> that saw, he's like, what's your weapon? He's like, GPS. That's a great weapon. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. And he didn't actually use it the way that he should have. Right. They like should have been taking... He should have been tracking like certain people, checking up on their bodies, seeing if there was any sure. weapon Yeah. Left. Well, look, we're watching the movie together and we're both sitting there thinking like, we'll wait for somebody to kill somebody and then pounds come up. after that. Yeah, pounds. I was thinking Vietnam traps. You know, punchy well, sticks and, and things like that. The one guy was making with the bamboo, right? But you know, again, we're in that was, the bamboo. But, but that was really that that was a really short segment. I mean, they didn't even carry that through. Yeah, yeah. They didn't. you know, that was. I have to say, to kind of backtrack a little, I thought there should have been at least a little more gore. I don't know. It mm -hmm. just seemed to. It seemed. I don't know. I think with a pacing. I don't know. It just feels yeah, like they should have yeah, had yeah. a little bit more there. Yeah, because it it was kind of a weird pacing as far as you know. There's something happening, and then there's this this other kind of slightly less uh, obviously no action, just kind of character study sort of drama. What's it going to play out later? Back to action. You know, quick pace kind of thing. It was basically just sort of quiet, quiet, quiet. Bang, 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 yeah. bang, bang, bang. Quiet, quiet. Start. Quiet, bang, go, bang, bang, stop. Bang, bang. You know, it's yeah. like. Stop, um, go, stop, go. Yeah, that was that was a little bit weird, but I, I think that the point of it was is they weren't really trying to make this movie just a gore. Right. No, you're right. It was it, it yeah. was about, you know, like you guys said, the clicks. I do love the fact that all the clicks seem to take each other out first. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Well, I mean, there was the click of the lighthouse where they weren't really trying to kill each other. Yeah. But, you know, really? <laughs> shit happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Man. <laughs> a little bit of a snafu there. Oops, sorry, <laughs> pointing the wrong person. But yeah, bah, 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 bah. Which, which I mean, well, how how high strung everybody? What were you gonna say? It reminds me, there's two things I noticed. Amazing. I think I saw one magazine change, <laughs> right? maybe two. Yeah, it's so that's like classic. you know, let's go back to the '80s. Unlimited ammo. Sure, absolutely. And nobody yeah, knows don't, proper don't count gun ammunition. Oh, and everybody, God. you know, like this is the, the guy yeah, with the Uzi the was just like, <laughs> yeah, he was just spraying and praying. Yeah. Now by a lot. Really limp Now the problem with that <laughs> for me was is he was actually supposed to be somebody. That right, he, he was the it. wild card. He was the one that volunteered. Yeah, he was like the ringer. Right, yeah, that, yeah, exactly. That was supposed to be really good in there. And then they also had the survivor, who right. I mean, actually was doing right. pretty good. I right, mean, well, he he was the survivor, and then there was a guy who volunteered because he was a, basically a psychopath. Yeah, yeah, he just wanted to kill people. Right. Yeah, and the, the bottomless flask he had was amazing. Yeah, yeah, he took a lot of swigs off that thing. Now, I'm wondering if there was sake in <laughs> one of those little security sheds. Because <laughs> there probably was. I mean, that's my only Well, thing. if there was a giant tub of rice... 
Yeah. Why not? You, you know, well, yeah, I mean, thing that I I'm never... sure they didn't have within three days to you know time enough to ferment the rice into into wine. <laughs> well, not that. I mean, <laughs> oh, okay. You know, I thought you were saying he was yet. making his own <laughs> making his own rice well, wine. If, he, if he's been there before, maybe he had he made some and hit it away. Yeah, yeah. maybe you know put up a moonshine still up in the corner somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, <laughs> but yeah, all in all, I think the movie really great. It stands yeah. on its own, like Ryan said. You don't really need yeah, to go and sec- watch the second. If you're curious enough, go ahead. Uh, it's not recommended by me. I don't know if Ryan's ever seen the second one. No, actually, okay. I haven't. I, I, I enjoyed John. the first one too I, much. I don't even have to look at John <laughs> to know that he hasn't seen because he hasn't seen this one. And we, no, nah, you know, after seeing this one, I might watch the second one. I don't know. I just the first one. I don't know. I just to give it my personal rating. I guess I'd give it like a two, maybe a three. This one? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Um, I didn't enjoy it much. I think the pacing was really weird. I understood why. And to me, it felt like there's a layer missing. Something to me just seemed not to quite, you know, something was missing for me. And I'm not quite sure what it was. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, with, with the. Yeah, again with the with the with the pacing sort of on and off. Yeah, I can I can see how there's just sort of like uh, there should be some sort of something else happening, sort of a a bridge to the to the verses and the choruses that were going on. Yeah, you know? and maybe it's the fact there was nobody I wanted to hate, nobody I liked. Yeah, because the other thing I noticed is you're introduced to everybody quick, very quickly. There's yeah, no yeah. build up to every individual character like most right. shows do, or one character they focus on. So that's another thing I think if I watch this more. You know, a couple of more times, maybe it'd say, "Okay, yeah. I like this character. Sure. I like this character." But from right off the bat, I, you know, I give it a, I'll give it a three. Mm. Okay, okay. Um, I'm, I'm three with a bullet. I'm, uh, I, I with enjoyed binoculars. it. <laughs> yeah, three with binoculars. Um, there was a bunch of reasons I like this movie. I, um, I, I'm pretty sure it came out as a as a really mainstream movie in Japan. Yeah. So I'm not sure. I, I'm not going to call it an, an independent movie, well, even though section. it really rang like a like an American independent movie, sort of. Um, there was just enough redeeming parts in it, I think, and that that sort of that sort of kept me going enough enough of the funny parts to 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 sort of watch, you know, some of the some of the other sort of drama things that yeah, were going I on. Yeah, I agree. Um, the 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 parts that I didn't like, um, some of the the high school drama got a little a little much. They started kind of going with that angle, and with sort the of weird more than the other things that didn't super fit. Right, it, you know, and I think that's when they started trying to introduce you to the characters was sort of through flashbacks, almost after they had already died. You know, yeah. like there was a couple of a couple of instances where where you really only find out about these people after you know like. After they're dead, or yeah, or during yeah. The, you know they're sleeping real quick, you know, right? Really exactly, weird. weird little dream sequences and, and stuff like that. Um, now keep in mind, I mean, you watched a couple extra dream sequences with yeah. the director's cut, but I mean, there was still you know a definite handful of the stuff in the in the, in the original. Um, I mean, enough to where you notice, you know, that's sort of like the character development that they're trying to put forward. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 gonna give it a three. I, I, yeah, um, I. I like this movie it was obviously my selection I've sure. seen it before yeah <laughs> this is probably about my fourth or fifth time watching this movie <laughs> sounds like he's hemming and hot in here what was your rating so anyway I watch it say two now you know <laughs> I know I can we totally both die. like it. I've seen this movie six times it's a two <laughs> <laughs> well actually I, I've been debating on whether or not I'm going to take it too far but you know honestly the movie like John pointed out is there could be a lot more development mm-hmm. that could happen in this movie. Personally, I'm going to just stick with a three because of the fact that you don't get it build up in anything. Yeah. And then obviously the second one just didn't continue on with sure. it. Sure. Well, if the for- second one was good and they followed it through on this, well, then I would probably consider a four right. off of it. But no, it's sticking with a three just based on the fact that there was not enough character development that they had nowhere really to go with a n- sequel. Yeah, it I, was. I wouldn't mind having a, a third one made and follow the two who won. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be interesting to see what they do, but um, I think that would either be amazing or suck out loud. Right, yeah, not as not as another watching another battle royale, maybe like them going back and seeing if they could take down the, the, the conglomeration or something like that, yeah. And the other thing is I want to see Quentin Tarantino remake this movie. Oh, man, that would that would be yeah. something that he, that he, he, he could see. do something like this pretty 
pretty you know really good justice. Yeah. Um, but you know this one as opposed to the second one, which is probably why I haven't seen it. Was the first one? It's all concept. Yeah. I mean, it's all just like you've never seen fourteen year olds, forty fourteen year olds, or forty two fourteen year olds have you know be put in a situation to kill each other. I have mean, you, you, you tell ever- somebody like, "Hey, I'm going to let you watch a movie," and it's about these these ninth graders who have to kill each other. You know, it's it's a, it's a fight to the death. Yeah. Just based on that description alone, you're like, I'm I'm in. Just, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say, have you ever watched, listen to Xbox Live? That's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, jeez. Yeah. It's, yeah. We won't even go there. So looks like our time's up, uh, almost up for myself, Jonathan Charney, James Stevens. Movie next week before we go. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, what's your yeah? What is what's your pick for next week? Well, I figured I had to redeem myself a little bit from from Lost Boys. Uh, you got a lot. You got a lot of digging. I, to I do. got a lot of digging to do. I'm gonna have to dig stairs to get out of that hole. Um, I be, I picked a movie called Super. It uh, came out. I want. God, I believe it was 010, uh 2010. Um, either late 2010 or early 2011. He's on it. Um, it was directed by James Gunn. Um, kind of, sort of, sort of new in the directing game, but but just really, really good storyteller. Um, ah, here we go. Yeah, 2010. Uh, James Gunn, uh, basically Rain Wilson, Ellen Page, uh, star in the movie along with um, uh, Kevin Bacon. Uh, it's basically a superhero movie, and I'll leave it at that because it's not your yeah. average superhero movie, and it's it's just something that 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 I think people need to experience. So I'm I'm, I'm looking forward to you guys watching <laughs> need this one. Need to experience. Uh, well, look, I mean it's. You said the same thing about Lost Boys, so no, no, no. That, <laughs> I mean, if you want to experience the 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 you know saxophone playing surf Nazi, that's an experience. But you know this this one as a whole movie <laughs> oh, is geez. is you know is is actually I I think Ooh. I think we're gonna have a nice you little be discussion digging about that, man. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I will. You'll be singing a different <laughs> tune after you after you uh, after you see this movie. Right. I mean, All look, right. like it or not, you know what I'm saying. What what? However you guys feel about it, it's. It's not Lost Boys, <laughs> so it's not even in the same vein. It's 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 independent. It was it was done on the Mad Sheep, re, you know, released really really limitedly. But those are the types of movies that are that yeah. are really going that need to be experienced. Yeah, that need to be experienced. That are that are not, you know, having Mainstream. you know being noted to death by by you know everybody else trying to you know that has their hand in the pod, you know, whether that be the the producers or, or movie studios or yeah. whatever. Um, so for a quick review, we all I gave it a three, James gave it a three, and Ryan gave it a three. So that would be a three. And first time we've actually agreed on on a movie. That's know. you know, first time for everything. Yeah. Ever. I know. <laughs> I've never agreed with these guys on any <laughs> practically anything, so so right. for myself, Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, and the strange guy who's normally in the corner, Ryan Preston. Right. Over here usually. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob Charney, Old Guy Tech TV, and I'm here to talk to you today about Windfall and the El Dorado County Fair. The largest event of El Dorado County will soon be here. Don't miss this opportunity to promote and build your business by advertising in the 2012 El Dorado County Fair Guide, published exclusively by The Windfall. The El Dorado County Fair Association is very excited to partner with Windfall again this year. Last year was such a success, we are thrilled to work with them again. The exposure that the El Dorado County Fair has in our community is amazing. We don't want you to miss it. Jody W. Gray, CEO of El Dorado County Fair, just told us this. So distributed in the Windfall and El Dorado Hills Telegraph, June 8, 2012, and available to the public at the welcome information booths at each entrance during the fair. This user-friendly guide features a map of the fairgrounds, event, vendor locations, and includes the schedule of events. Reservations are required. Space is limited. Circulation is 20,000 plus copies, and the deadline is 525-2012. So make sure you get your ad into the windfall today. Tell them Rob sent you.